But so you can look at your calling and you can say, it's too much. I'm not worthy of it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fit for the job. I'm not. And don't get discouraged. It's supposed to be like that. Now I'm going to share something with you that happened to me on the way back from ministering last week. I was ministering around the country, um, and this happened. So, and you'll enjoy it because it's embarrassing on, at my expense. <laughs> and, but let me just say also, you know, it's like the enemy is looking for anything that's not consistent. The enemy wants to mess you up. He wants to trip you up. He'll use anything he can, even appearances. He'll use what he can. Now this wasn't a thing that I did something wrong, but it's something that shows the principle. I'm in... Chicago. I'm in O'Hare Airport getting ready to go back to New Jersey. The flight was delayed and I'm there, you know, in this section with all the people waiting to go. And I had to, I figured, let me do something. Let me do some research. And I was doing the book and doing, you know, I said, well, I can't, my computer what, had no Wi-Fi. So I said, but my phone, I can get something. Maybe let me try it. I didn't usually do that. I said, let me try Siri. And if this Siri could help me. <laughs> Big mistake. I said, I said, Hi, Siri, and I was looking for some research on some Nazi uniforms having to do with, with what I had to do. So I said, Siri, so all of a sudden, Siri doesn't say it, shouts it out. It was full volume. Full volume says, looking for Nazi uniforms. <laughs> Everybody looks up. And they have shock, disgust looking at me. And, and I'm like, okay, no, no, and, and, then, and then, and then, and then it goes off a second time. Are you still looking for Nazi uniforms? And I'm trying to suffocate it. I'm trying to put the thing, I'm stuffing it in, and it's not working. I'm stuffing it in. They're all looking, and the people all around me were a group of Mormons. And they were heading to Israel. And they're looking at who's this Nazi in our midst. And the guy is crawling, crawl, he's looking at me with his guy's giving me this look. And I say, I said, it's not what it looks like. And finally I said, I'm not a Nazi. Now, there is, now other people looking up, who's, who said Nazi? He's a Nazi. That guy over there. Don't mind. And, and, and finally, and the guy's still not, not believing it, they're not believing it. I said, no, I said, I'm doing research. It's, I'm writing a book. You know, the guy said, oh, you write books. I said, yeah, what book? I said, the harbinger is one. He said, the harbinger? He says, I, I have the harbinger. He said, I have, I have the power and I have the... I said, you're Jonathan Kahn? I said, yeah. He said, I can't believe it. Because I never knew he was a Nazi sympathizer, but that's... I'm never... When we get back to Salt Lake City, we burn the books, you know. But... Now, that, now that was innocent, but it shows you the anything that is not consistent in your calling, the enemy is going to try to use it. He's going to try to bring disrepute to God. The two sons of Aaron burned a strange fire to God, remember? They were struck down. You know, so in the New Testament. They, they, they said they were giving everything and they didn't. They held back and they were struck. The greater your calling, the higher the standard, the more you need to purify yourself. Get everything in order. The priest, you get everything where you can be transparent. For anything that's not consistent with your calling, get it out. Don't let your, but on the other hand, don't let your sins disqualify your calling, your mantle. Let your mantle, your calling, disqualify your sins. Transform you. Make you who you are. In other words, instead of saying, oh, I'm not worthy to be that, get on the other side of it. You know, I'm going with a calling and, I'm, and this is not worthy anymore of my life. Now think about it. The priest to put on the new garment, he had to take off an old garment. I remember as a kid, I hated getting up for school. And I wanted to sleep as late as I could. So one day I had this idea. I'll get dressed the night before with all my clothes and I'll put my pajamas over it. Then in the morning I just open it up and I go, I sleep late. Well, it worked maybe one time, the second time my parents got wise to it. But the garments God gave you, you know, in the same way, you can't, you can't use the old to minister in the new. You see, the, 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 what he's saying, you can't, you, you got saying to the priest, you can't use your clothes, your, your old clothes to minister in my temple. You need this clothes. You need this to go. So with your calling. So with your calling. You cannot bring the old into the new. It won't work. The garment that God has given you, it doesn't fit you. It, it's above you. It's big. It's, a, it's, it's size is bigger. You know, when you were young and you got clothes and they were always bigger so you could grow into it. You as parents know it. 
But so you can look at your calling and you can say, it's too much. I'm not worthy of it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fit for the job. I'm not. And don't get discouraged. It's supposed to be like that. That's the point. You're never up to your calling. You're ne I'm not up to my calling. You're not up to your calling. In myself. But it's meant to be that way. You see the theme again and again. Moses saying, no, I can't speak. Isaiah, I'm unclean. Jeremiah, I'm too young. Gideon was the weakest of them. Peter, I'm, I'm unworthy, Lord. That's the point. You see, you don't, you don't fit the clothes. You just put them on. And you grow into it. You don't want a mantle, a garment, a calling that fits you. Because if it fits you, if it's the same size, you got nowhere to go. You got nowhere to grow. You want a calling that's above where you are now so you can get there, so you can grow. That's why Paul could write, walk in a manner worthy of the high calling God has given you. Not that you are walking in it, but walk now in the high calling. It's above you. You don't want to be pulling the, the, the calling down. You want to let the calling to pull you up. And it wasn't just the cleansing, the clothing. There was something else. That day, there was the anointing. Then you shall take, verse 7, the oil of anointing and pour it on his head and anoint him. This was not Presbyterian rubbing here going on. You know, once, once when we were new believers, we went to a, camp, a tent camp revival meeting. It was in New Jersey, but it was like from the, from the south, you know, old school. And the guy at the end says, it's going to be an anointing service. He says, okay, let's go. And we went. And I don't know, it wasn't like a nice little thing here. We're on this like assembly line. We come across, and the guy, they must have gone to the supermarket and gotten tons of Wesson oil. And the guy takes it and slaps it all over us. And we're <laughs> dripping. We can barely even see. We're, we're, we go, what happened? We're like in another dimension, you know. Well, that's kind of what it says, like, like the oil dripping down the beard of Adam. That was dripping. There's a lot of oil. So there's the, the clo there's the cleansing, the clothing, and then the anointing. The anointing. You cannot fulfill that mantle without the oil of the Spirit. You know, your cleansing leads to the clothing, and the clothing has to be anointed. You have to be anointed. You cannot fulfill your calling without God's Spirit. What did Messiah tell his people at the beginning of their calling? The apostles, he said, wait in Jerusalem. Why? so you can be clothed on high with power. Here they are again. Notice the same. Notice how consistent the Bible is. Here is the beginning of the Great Commission, beginning of the New Testament of ministry, the beginning of going out. And what happens? They wait and they get anointed, just like the priest did on their first day. You see, the Spirit of God does the will of God. See, if you do something, your spirit does the will. What you want, it's your spirit is doing it. God's Spirit does the will of God. So that's why you want to do, you know, the thing is I want to do God's will, but I get the Spirit. The Spirit of God will do the will. I will put my Spirit within them and I will cause them to walk in my ways. The Spirit will with you will do the will of God. So the Spirit, the anointing is to do the will of God. To be able to do what you couldn't do without the anointing. The anointing will allow you to do it. I can do all things. The anointing allows me to do that. But the Spirit goes with the will of God. So also it means the more you are in the will of God, the more the anointing can come upon you. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.